What's up, bro? Yeah. Need some water? Do you have the yes, please. What? John came and caddied for me today, which was good. He had the map, with it, which is, we call it the yardage book. <laughs> How far is the car away? At least 1,500 yards that away. Wind direction? Out of the north. Oh, perfect. Don is Mr. Activity. Well. Yeah. And we have a great relationship where we kind of do a lot of things together, which is great. PGA Tour cards up for grabs. These are the PGA Tour's proving grounds. Can you step up? and make one of the most important parts of your career. They tour level test. You just gotta really grind, staying consistent, staying patient. In a grueling season. It is gut-wrenching for those guys out there. Seems to be in shock a little bit, what just happened. Tour hopefuls are sharpened into champions. There's so many guys out here that will play on the PGA Tour, and it just so happens they're all here right now. The singular goal remains the same to earn a PGA Tour card. On the Corn Ferry Tour, they are all just one shot away. The ascent to the top of any sport can be a steep climb. For England's Callum Terran, the path to the PGA Tour is about the thrills that come with the journey. We're in the Snow Basin, which is a ski resort in the mountains of Utah. The views are incredible, and we're only 30 minutes from the golf course, which is crazy. Golf is my job and my life, pretty much, but it's nice to have other hobbies outside of golf. And mountain biking is that for me. Oh, I've stacked it! <laughs> Being on the road a lot, I wish I could just have a travel bike and put it in the suitcase and bring it to every event. On the course in Utah, Taryn benefited from a refreshed mind, stringing together four under par rounds for the first time all season. A small nod to his renewed passion. I've always had a bike since the age of, I think two my first bike was, and I've loved biking since that age, but obviously golf kind of takes over your life. And during lockdown, I kind of refound it and I'm back into it full time. Picking this back up, and loving it. I think I'm gonna be looking for new adventures and different places to go and try and be on the bike as much as I can. Oh, he's off. It's important to stay in your comfort zone. Like anything, you can kind of get ahead of yourself and take on things that you shouldn't, but the more I do it, I'm sure that the more thrills and the danger, the routes and different trials I'll be getting after. We go to some awesome places, see some awesome parts of the world and it's just nice to switch off from golf and do activities and kind of have experiences along the way. The Rocky Mountain Air continued to pay off for Taryn, who earned a third place finish one week later in Colorado. Another checkpoint on his route to the PGA Tour. I mean, everyone has their own journey. You just have to keep going. That is the name of the game. Perseverance has become a hallmark of Taryn and his career a trait sharpened by his experience on the PGA Tour China series, where he rung up six runner-ups in 30 starts. It just always felt like it was a near miss. You look back and it was a duff chip here or a bad decision there, and you just think, when's this gonna happen, really? Ironically enough, a second place result in the final event of 2018 earned him a first place finish in the year-long Order of Merit race. Charlie Saxon was leading all the way up to the final round and I shot 64 on him in the final. Yeah. Finally, get to the top of the mountain and finish first on the Order of Merit. To get over the line after all the near misses just kind of give me that confidence that the game is there and I can do it week in, week out. The guy can play, he's an unbelievable ball striker. He's just got a knack for the moment and uh, it's no surprise that he's putting together a nice stretch of golf here in the, the last little bit and uh, I expect that to continue. Sitting just inside the top 25 in the standings this season, Taryn continues to persevere and make every shot count with a PGA Tour card now in sight. At the end of 2021, when people get to graduate, there'll be definitely someone who finishes 26th on the money list and that's that, that could be that one shot. Get to nine under, sneak inside that top ten. There you go. 
all these parts and birdies and opportunities to take advantage of are all so important. You have to try until that last final hole and that putt is finally in. Keep grinding until, until the week's over. Taron followed up his best finish of the year thus far with a pair of top 25s in San Antonio. After the T third, I played solid in San Antonio, both 16th and 18th. The game is trending in the right direction. Talon's a hell of a player. Hopefully we're both fortunate enough to get our tour cards here in a year's time. Charlie Saxon increased his own chances with his first top 10 of the season. I feel like my game's been around in a form. I was thankful to put together a good week, uh, much needed after a rocky start, but I feel like I'm on a good track here going forward and hopefully get on a bit of a run. I like this golf course. I played this tournament last year and played solid on the weekend. So try to ride some of that momentum into this year. After two missed cuts in the Lone Star State, Braden Thornberry opened his week in the Ozarks with a five under 67. The games there, it's just about kind of, you know, putting it together at the right times and, you know, staying patient and, you know, letting it happen instead of trying to force it. Callum Terran and Charlie Saxon carried their momentum from San Antonio into the first round each carding a four under 68. Just gonna keep doing what I've been doing. That's really all I can do. You trust the stuff that I've been working on it, it is gonna continue to work. As did Dylan Wu, who's made a meteoric rise since earning full status in 2019. Last year, I was a conditional status guy, um, doing a lot of Monday qualifiers and just knocking on the door and just not getting a chance. I learned a lot just being thrown into the season and just playing back-to-back -back weeks and, and getting exposed to the Corn Ferry Tour. New experience, new environment. Once I got into Springfield, Illinois, and I lost in the playoff and finished runner-up, I mean, it just gave me a, a boost of confidence. Got the last-minute call that he had a spot. He went, it changed his season on the Corn Ferry Tour. I've had two second place finishes, I've had a bunch of top fives and top tens, and it's, it's been great just to see how far I've come. Just his second year on this tour. Golf is so roller coaster, and it's, it's, it's a long journey if you're gonna play for a long time, so you just gotta keep on battling and, and keep on staying positive. A staple in the top 10 of the standings this season, Wu is well on his way to earning a PGA Tour card in a year's time. You watch the PJ Tour ever since eight or nine years old. From Medford, Oregon, Dylan Wu. Now that I'm playing well, it just makes me even hungrier to be out there for a long time. All right, we made a pretty together. We're good. Starting it off at the, the whole location sign. It's gonna be perfect. Should the wind should take it a little to the right. Stop, sit, sit. Go in the hole now. Screw it up like that. I want to be somebody that people look out for. Gosh, sit. Sit. It's fine. Hold it a little bit. Yeah, get it real good. It's a good problem to have when you're in the lead and you're you're feeling the pressure for sure. Yeah, I wanted to come a little harder. I wanted to hit a little flight farther. You kind of feel the weight on every shot you hit, especially with the closer you're getting to the finish. Hit the ball. I just didn't hit. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was like, go, <laughs> go. It's a perfect line, though. I think if I hit it harder, it's dead in the center. Anybody wants to be up near the top, even if it means more of a spotlight on you. Wu went on to cap his week with a final round 63 for his fifth top 10 of the year. Yet his first victory still eludes him. People are asking, when are you going to win? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm trying to win out here. It's, it's hard. Really, this is uncharted territory, you know, to come here with that huge lead. Through 15 starts, Wu has finished 10 tournament rounds inside the top five of the leaderboard, third most of any player. Once you keep on putting yourself in those positions, you're gonna break through eventually. All those experiences are just gonna help me um, in the future. Dylan Wu can be ultra competitive. As long as you have that hunger and you, you learn from your mistakes, you're gonna get over the hurdle at some point. It's all about just sticking to my DNA. My good golf is good enough. It would be great to, to get a trophy out here. You just gotta take the positives and keep, keep your head up. And if you look back and you see 
that you gave it your all and you stayed mentally strong. And I think at the, at the end, you'll have a few trophies to hold. The final round in Missouri meant showtime in the Show Me State as Braden Thornberry finished just outside the top 25 with four rounds under par. It's such a long season and just if you keep continuing to get better and better and just kind of let the results happen, that's kind of what we're all trying to do. Dawson Armstrong also bounced back from a pair of missed cuts, though his Sunday struggles continued after entering the weekend in solo seventh. Just trying to manage my game as well as I can, whether it be good golf or bad golf. That's something I haven't done very well in the recent past. So now, just trying to learn from that. Charlie Saxon was stagnant after his strong start, finishing in a tie for 48th with Callum Terran. Despite failing to keep his top 25 streak alive, the Englishman's relationship with his caddy, Landon Ewing, keeps his spirits high. The old best Western blue stripe. Good towels, huh? These are, are absolutely. The towels? That's the pool towels. Ah, the pool. Ah. I love this tea shop. <laughs> Every year. Every year. The caddy and player relationship is is huge, especially on this tour. It takes time to get used to each other's way of working things out and numbers. Yeah, it's in that front bunker. Yeah. yeah. Let's get to, let's hit it 100, 102. Yeah. It's more like it there. That should be good, bro. You got a hand clap. Yep. I think it's about a year now we've been together, and I think obviously better things are to come, so I'm pretty excited about that relationship. Let the party begin. Good three quarter one of those right at that back left edge of that bunker. Yeah. Hmm. Don't hit that bird. Inside the hole, just dial the pace in. Yeah. Like left center or so. Yep. Thanks. What with the jowlers. We're very good friends off the course. Ah. It's quite hard to keep up with Landon. He's always trying to get me to go to the mountain with him or go here, go there. He's literally non-stop and it's just finding that balance really. While their bond is evident on both sides of the ropes, it's just one of many unique tandems on the Corn Ferry Tour. What's better than playing catch, you know? <laughs> yeah, I played baseball until uh, high school with my caddy, Eric. We, uh, that's how we met. Oh, don't get on video. <laughs> and the fact that we've been friends for forever and that he caddies for me, it works great. To be with him every week, traveling with him, be on the course every second of the day, it's awesome. We have a great bond that we've created over the last 10 plus years. He knows all my tendencies. Whenever we're in a predicament on the course, I, I trust him. So that's the key between a player and caddy. He's just as much of a part of it as I am because we're going out there together and when we have success, it's on both of us and we have failures, it's on both of us. So we're definitely a team out there. You know how important uh, a caddy player relationship is out here. It's everything. A good relationship, you know, on and off the golf course is important. They know your tendencies. It's really important for them to, to understand how you're feeling so you can kind of make a, a correct decision. You certainly want somebody that's always got your back and it's gonna help you, you know, play to the best of your abilities and it's great to have somebody on the bag that you trust. I'm the one out there hitting shots, but he's out there every step of the way. Over the course of the year, you, you experience a lot together and so you kind of really form that, that team bond. The better that we are together and the, the, the more of a team that we are on the golf course, hopefully the better the results are gonna be. That teamwork would prove critical in the stretch of golf ahead. It was a sensational course, suited me really nicely. My game felt really ready to compete. Coming off a week of rest, Ryan Ruffles came out firing in Omaha. To go bogey free that first day in very tough conditions was super important and I took a lot of confidence from that going forward. Round three, I was bogey free again. My goal was to try and get quite a few out in front to give me a buffer. I was definitely happy to have a, a two shot lead going into Sunday. The Aussie held on to the lead with three holes to play, 
but bogeys on 16 and 17 put an end to his hopes of victory. It obviously stung a bit to not be able to finish off a great week the way I wanted to. They kind of rocketed me up the order of merit a little bit, so things are training the right direction. Ruffles' confidence after his first career runner-up is a far cry from where he sat just two years ago. I was kind of touted as one of the younger kind of next things from Australia. And then 2018, I kind of lost it. I lost my game. I couldn't drive the ball at all. I was scared to play with even my mates. Lost my card on Latin America. Pretty low point for me. Overcoming that mental hurdle is a challenge that many pros face in their quest for success. You're not a true professional golfer if you haven't thought about quitting. There was times, you know, when I was doing the Monday qualifiers for the Corn Ferry Tour. When I first came over to America, I remember I missed my first seven. Um, and I did think about packing up, going home. You know, it's not always going to be easy. Uh, you got to take the good times with the bad and the bad times, once you've gotten through them, just makes you enjoy the, the good stuff even more. Everyone's had failures in this game. It happens to everyone at some point. Golf is such a mentally challenging game. You have to, you have to block out all the negative thoughts as much as you can. Nice bounce back for Charlie Saxon. It's just the nature of the sport. We play their ups and downs. And uh, you just got to weather the storm and, and learn from the highs and also learn from the lows. Just keep learning and keep progressing. But for Mito Pereira, the grind of the game took its toll at a much earlier age. My whole life, I always thought I would play in the PGA Tour. From three years old to 14, I was almost full commitment with golf. When I was 14, I didn't have a normal life. I always play golf and I just wanted to do everything as a normal person. Yeah. I just quit golf for two years. Straight two years. I didn't touch a, a single club. When you're that age, you're probably young enough to come back and play golf again like I did. That feeling of hitting the ball, I remember feeling like I didn't even quit for two years. Pereira made his way onto the Corn Ferry Tour in 2017. Had a really good year for being a rookie. Uh, kept my car, I think I, I ended up like 50th or 60th. Then on 2018, I played really bad. So I lost my car, lost everything. After being so close to the PJ Tour, I went all the way down. Guillermo Pereira, third on the Latino America Order of Merit. With success on the Latino America Tour, he earned conditional status this season, and in just his second start, he found victory. It was the greatest feeling in my golf career, for sure. Golf, it's always getting better. You're never at the master point. You don't, like, reach a roof in golf. You are always competing, and that's why I think I came back and played. But Pereira's mission won't be complete until he has a PGA Tour card to show for it. Out here, it's really competitive every week. It's impossible to win every week, but I have to make an effort to keep playing well and try to, to finish in the top 25. Entering the following week ranked third in the standings, Sunday in Portland would traditionally mean graduation day for the Chilean but the 25 will have to wait until 2021 due to a prolonged season. At this point in the year, I was hoping to, you know, be, be trying to get my PJ Tour card, but there's, you know, still tons to play for. A pressure pack and drama filled week. The meat of our season's coming up, starting in Portland and then moving towards the playoffs. Those events carry a lot more weight. Top 10 is a big gold mine. That'd be really a, a nice achievement at the end of the year. Starting in Portland, if you can come into there really sharp and, and with confidence and momentum, there's a lot of great things that can happen in four weeks. If you can establish a good points tally this year and it carries over to next, then you're in a strong position to gain that PGA Tour status. Callum Terrence stepped up to the moment 
carding a final round 66 to earn his third top 10 of the season. My game's in, in great shape at the moment. I've had a few good weeks out here and I plan to keep doing that. Pereira picked up his first top 25 in over a month with a tie for 14th, alongside Charlie Saxon, who cooled off on the weekend after sharing the 36-hole lead. There's not a lot in my golf game that I'm not confident with right now, so if I continue the form, I'm hopeful for a good round here through the playoffs. A missed cut by Dylan Wu moved him down to eighth on the Corn Ferry Tour regular season points list, two spots behind Pereira in sixth. Taron jumped to his highest position all season, joining Nick Hardy inside the 25. With three of the heaviest weighted events on the horizon, opportunity lies ahead. He is good as look. Ruffles and other PGA Tour hopefuls are well on their way to achieving their lifelong dream. I'm playing better golf than I think I've played my Thank whole you. life and working my way towards a PJ Tour card, which is something that I've always wanted to do. Best shot I've hit today. Watch the next step of the journey on the Corn Ferry Tour.